Good day to all you Arsface fans. Today we've got some people looking for some advice. Let's see if we can give it to them, shall we? First up, I just discovered a free year affair of my husband. Cannot handle the pain and having very bad thoughts. Need advice. I, 40 female, have been with my husband, 38 male, for 20 years. Married for 18. We have two kids together, 19 female and 17 male. I've gone through my worst phases of life with my husband, and he has always been a rock support for me. Our marriage had rough patches as well. I got pregnant at a young age, so I had never experienced the life of teenagers. Early in our marriage, I cheated twice on my husband. One of the affairs was with my ex for about a year and a half, PA and EA. And another was EA with a random guy online, also for about a year. We married at a young age, so I made some really terrible choices, which I regret to this day. He forgave me for the affair, but made me sign an agreement for distribution of assets in case of divorce in the future. I agreed and understood why he had to do that. We started fresh and had an awesome marriage. He encouraged me to become sober and clean from drugs. At the time I cheated, I used to take drugs. He got a promotion and we bought our house. He planned vacations and encouraged me to pursue my hobbies. He helped with chores and was a great dad to our children. About seven years ago, I was diagnosed with urine cancer. When the doctor informed us about the cancer, he literally broke down and started crying. At that moment, I realized how much he loves me. I had to undergo surgery for removal of the uterus. After successful surgery, he took care of me like I was a child. He made me breakfasts, ordered lunch, and cooked dinner. For six months, he did not let me do any household work or any other work. He even made food for the children on his own. These are the moments that I look back on and imagine that I could not have survived without him. He is my soulmate and I cannot imagine my life without him. So last night while he was sleeping, I unlocked his phone and opened his Facebook for some of his photos as I was planning on surprising him with the big collage of his life journey on his birthday. I saw two Facebook accounts on it. One was his regular one, but the other was with a different name. I opened the other account and found that messages were sent to his former coworker. They were sexting. I didn't read them, but screenshotted the entire thing and sent it to my phone. Deleted the screenshots from his phone and left his phone on his side. I was not able to sleep and was crying all night. In the morning, my eyes were noticeably swollen. He asked me about my health, to which I replied I was fine. He gave me a kiss on the forehead and left for work. As soon as our younger son left for school, I opened the screenshots and read their entire conversation. Messages were dated back six months ago. As I scrolled up, they discussed about their sex fantasies, things they'll do to each other, and nudes. It made me sick to my stomach. As I scrolled more, I saw the message, Happy Free Year Anniversary. I don't know why, but after reading that, I literally had a panic attack. I was just laying on the floor crying. He told her about my past infidelity and how he still has nightmares and flashbacks in his mind, but with her... He feels free from those thoughts and enjoys every second of it. He even said that how he is tolerating every moment he has with me for the past 18 years. Being intimate with me is just physical satisfaction he has to do for me, but with her, it is deep emotional chemistry. How he stayed in marriage because of the children and will leave me as soon as both of our kids start going to college. They even had planned their wedding. It feels like in one day, my life is destroyed. I thought we were happy family. I had everything in life, but in one day my world is shattered. I wanted to grow old with him, but now it feels lonely. It seems like my life was delusional. I can feel my body becoming lifeless, like my soul is being murdered. I thought that he would have forgotten the past mistake I made 14 years ago, but he was just burying my mistake for so many years. I know that he is my soulmate and I cannot live without him. I don't know what to do. It's been five hours since I read the messages. I just want to die so that I have the privilege of dying with him as my husband rather than alone. Should I tell him how I feel and what are my thoughts? These past years I have no idea how much he suffered from the trauma of my betrayal. I know it would be selfish of me to guilt trip him, but my soul is tied to him. If he leaves me, I would rather die than living alone with him or someone else. I'm confused and don't know what to do next. First, whatever happens, you have one priority. Your kids. This is the main thing to consider. I suggest you talk to a lawyer soon, and also seek an appointment with a therapist. Don't take this alone. Step by step, your life is far from finished. I suggest you go to some friends, find an excuse to support in order to keep cool, then proceed there 
to think about future moves. I also suggest you need to have lots of options in hand, with a clear mind before doing anything. Sooner or later, you will need to confront your husband. But take your time first. Take care of you. All right, next up, a story simply titled, I Caught Her Today. I caught her once at the very beginning of our relationship, but that was like less than a month official together, so we talked through expectations and moved on. Four years later, here we are in a trial separation because she needs to figure out what's right for her. It's a long read, but we talked it over thoroughly and decided we needed a refresher. Part of the plan was that she needed to get out of the house and start hanging out with her friends again, which she has been doing a lot, like going out four to five times a week. I never question her grill her, just wish her well and tell her to be safe and call me if she needs anything at all. We still live together, but have been sleeping in separate rooms, and I can hear when she comes home. Due to my fears of a repeat situation, we outlined our expectations going into this and seeing other people was not an option and was very clearly off the table. Her mother also lives with us and is nice enough, but is pretty obviously poison in her ear and is a very, I don't need no man, all men are pigs kind of person. She also has slept with something like 15 guys in the less than a year she's been here. I always let the dogs out at 6am and just so happened to bump into her coming home. I was sleepy and muttered and, oh hey, where'd you go? Just trying to be friendly? She came back with, uh, Nathan stood me off and her eyes got wide as she realized she was talking to me and not her mother. She's on Tinder again. I told her I was leaving and needed to get out of the house before I killed myself. Not being manipulative, I have a history of severe depression and was legitimately concerned I wouldn't be able to restrain myself. Her only response was, please don't go, I can't afford to rent by myself, which absolutely broke me. In my darkest moments, face to face with the person who redefined my expectations of love, the woman I was ready to commit my life to, my reason why, I was reduced to how much I contributed financially. The same paycheck she's been using to sleep around with other guys. I don't know what to do. I'm sobbing and shaking. I haven't slept in days. I'm messing up at work. I've developed a drinking problem again. I was two years sober. And I'm ready to let go and end it all with a magnificent downward spiral. The heck am I supposed to do? There is no reason anymore. Why should I wake up? Why should I care about my body? Why should I care about anyone? I have no friends, no family, and I mean none. I'm just naked, alone, and crying in an empty house. There is no bright side. I have nothing left. Dude, I'm sorry this happened to you. I can only imagine how hard and how terrible it feels to have someone treat you so horribly. I'm here to remind you that she is the one who is a very crappy person. She's the one who actually has nothing. It's not you. You have a heart. You gave her and her mother which was way too kind, a place to stay. You have so much to live for, and so many women would match the qualities that you provide. This isn't the end of your life. It's now a beginning for you to get someone you deserve. This is a fresh start. Her actions have nothing to do with your worth. She is the liar and the unstable one. You have no issues whatsoever. Please remember who you are, and good luck. And last but not least, a quick one titled, It feels like we're just going in circles. On February 27th of 2020, I was cheated on by my ex, I guess you would say, girlfriend. The only issue is that she admitted it to me right away that same night, but I don't know what happened. When my classmate sent me a pic while I was on the way back from work of her sitting on another man's lap, and he told me she was really drunk and dancing on him. He then said they went upstairs together, but shortly after, he may have seen her leaving. This is her story as well. She says he was wearing the same brand of underwear as I usually do and she realized what she was giving up, so she left. When I got home, she was waiting for me, and I broke up with her that night. She has really been putting 110% into trying to get back together, but the fair partner guy is in some of my classes, and seeing his smug face on video made it really hard to believe her. I feel like he's laughing at me because he's one of those guys who thinks he is better than you, when that may not be the case in reality, but something about his face screams, I had sex with your girlfriend, the only thing that she has stood her ground on since we broke up is that they didn't have sex. A mutual friend who was there so that she would help verify information if I promised to get back together with my ex. I just think that no matter what, there will always be that doubt in my mind, and when I doubt her, I feel furious that she may have not only cheated on me, but lied to me consistently since then. Does it get better over time, or are we screwed? 
She was a great partner and friend, and I wish we could go back to what we were before this will issue. But with this uncertainty, that will never happen. Edit. She just got back to me about a polygraph. She's willing to take one, and she will be able to finance it herself. I will go through with this for closure, and because I don't have anything to lose. I don't know how these things work, especially with COVID, but we shall see, I guess.